Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. And uh, in the next two weeks, we are going to be running our summer sale where all products on the Flip Normals store is 50% off. So make sure to go over there and check them out. Now, these products that we're going to highlight for you today are actually, you know, that all of them are 50% off. And these are going to be for anyone who wants to get into character art, anyone who wants to be a character artist. So the first one we want to start off with here is going to be Introduction to ZBrush. Now, this is... Like ZBrush is like the essential tool for any character artist. And you know, it's a little tricky to get into, but over the years we've many we've made many introduction series to different kinds of software and we've sort of tried to boil it down from all the teaching we've done, um, gone around to different students and all the feedback that we've gotten, and then created this one introduction course to ZBrush. Yeah, the point here is really so that you can start this course without knowing anything about ZBrush and at the end of it you have a full grasp of it. Where at the end we just take a, take you through how to make this sculpt in real time in nice and controlled fashions, and you know we just cover all the all the features you need to to know in order to start with ZBrush. The difference between this kind of introduction and your standard introduction to ZBrush is that we don't cover every single menu item. Like you don't need to know what's under the C plugin menu on like number five or something. Yeah, exactly. This is this is geared towards character artists where we work with C spheres and show you how to build up form really quickly. Like we've talked about in many of our YouTube videos, you know, how to really build solid designs and looking at your silhouette and, and building, building form and, and shape in a, in a really effective way. So that's going to be the first one. Like it's a really good way to, to get you started if you know nothing about 3D and you don't know anything about characters really. Yeah, without this, you know, without knowing ZBrush, you can't really do anything as a character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's what we're starting off with this one. Um, then we have modeling characters for games by Gavin Golden. Now Gavin is some someone we've worked with uh, before and he's made this awesome modeling series uh, focused uh, specifically on games. Now Gavin is a character artist for Insomniac Games and I think he was recently working on the new Spider-Man game. And yeah, he's been a few years on that. He's been a lead artist there for years now. Yeah, so Gavin, really awesome and really cool style of teaching. So this basically takes you through his workflow of how he created this character. And like I said, it's, it's, it's aimed at games. So you can take a lot of the principles from the introduction series and then start to apply it to, to this series directly. Like I would recommend an introduction series if you have never touched ZBrush before. Otherwise this uh, series can be a little more challenging to, to get into. I wouldn't recommend this series for someone who's never opened ZBrush before, basically. Yeah, it's a really cool series because this is this is something which I would personally like to watch because in in the beginning, you just have to learn introduction to ZBrush and all that. But after a while, you just have to, you just have to learn the process. What step comes after what? What is retopology? How do you do low poly bakes? All these kind of things. So it's it's a bit more intermediate, but it's it's really, really solid and highly recommended for people who's been doing 3D for a little while. Yeah, and you know, Gavin has a lot of really cool tips about uh, making stuff for games, whether it's, uh, you know, you're working with, with fabrics, um, how, you, how to do your bakes properly, how to present it in Marmor set as well. So once you're done with all of this, you can have a really cool presented character. Um, as, and as a follow-up to, uh, to that series, he also did a texturing characters for games, which is, you know, essentially like the previous one just focused on texturing, texturing in, in Substance Painter. Uh, which is a really cool series as well, where you you know you you look at how to do your different kind of maps, normal maps, all the bakes you might have made in ZBrush, you can bring them into Substance, and it's really a, a good way to start for anyone who wants to texture characters. Yeah, if you if you're interested in learning texture, I can't recommend this enough. I've been working for like most of my career as a texture artist, and I learned so much from just watching this as well. Just seeing another high level artist like Gavin working is is really a treat. Yeah, and, and it's, not, it's not very often you get someone who's a high-level artist, uh, especially in games, that, that makes really high-quality tutorials. So these tutorials from Gavin aren't your typical um, see-me-do-work-from-A-to-B. Um, it's, it's more of his, like, the principle behind his work, and he shows you specific parts of the series, how to do this and how to do that, which is one of the things I really like about Gavin's style of teaching. So really cool series, you know, painting skin, painting fabrics, painting different kinds of accessories, and then again, presenting your work in, in Marmor set. And I think presenting your work in Marmor set, especially as a games artist when you're doing characters, is a fantastic tool because it just allows you to 
display your model in the best way and you know you make sure that it runs real time as well now sort of like an in between to those two can be our how to retopologize full character so here's a series where we talk a lot about the fundamentals so and this is specifically for retopology where we talk about loops we cover all the loops and the sort of like essential way to build up topology a lot of the times when people start out doing retopology they just go ham right away they just start creating details in the topology that don't necessarily need to be there and it's not always focused on on good deformation but that's really where this series i think stands out yeah so whatever tool you're using this here is going to work we, we used maya for this but you know i've been doing using this exact approach in 3d max or like old moto or you can even use blender like whatever it is this is all about the principles mm. the tools are so simple like you're using quadro and you're just dragging it out what's hard about this is the methodology to it so we just cover every single thing we're starting off with blocking out the main loops and then we're just connecting everything up finalizing everything and uh, then we're doing uvs for the character as well just showing how you can do uvs in a nice and easy production friendly way yeah, the cool thing about this series, I think, is like this is our approach to retopology in in a professional environment. You know, this is what we would do for uh, visual effects. It would it would be the same uh, starting point for games, or if you're doing commercials, uh, it's just showing you where to place the main loops. That sort of like, and from the main loops, you can. It's kind of like when you're doing a puzzle. You, know, exactly. you always put down the corner pieces first. And then you put the frame around, and then once you have the frame and all the connecting pieces, it's it's really easy to like start adding the details of of the puzzle piece. Yeah, this is an approach that's been refined over many years. When uh, some years ago, back when I was a real artist in a real company, <laughs> when I worked at NPC on Alien Covenant, I was working on the retopology for the main xenomorph, and this was exactly the same approach. You start blocking in the main xenomorph parts based on a scan or a concept sculpt you have, and then you just connect everything up. So you know if you're doing a Character like this, a xenomorph, a human, whatever it is, even for film or games, the approach is exactly the same. Yeah, and you should really only need one solid uh, series about retopology, and I think this one covers everything that you'll ever need to know. And once you know this, uh, we've had a few people talk about, oh, okay, how do how do I retopologize this specific part of the body or something? Um, once you know the theory behind it and how to place your loops, how to change direction in loops. Then you can start to practice on, on other complex objects, whether it's for characters or environment pieces or whatever it is. And then, you know, you apply those same principles to, to that. And then following on from that, we have our concepting with Marvelous Designer and ZBrush. Now, this series is interesting because it's not a pure Marvelous focused um, tutorial. Now, this shows you how to move between Marvelous, like still creating a, a piece of fabric in Marvelous. So it has all the Marvelous. It's a short introduction. And then how to create, you know, this um, this jacket inside of Marvelous. We also show if you want deformation in there, how to import animation caches into Marvelous Designer to get a more dynamic feel for for the fabrics. And then finally, importing it into ZBrush and cleaning everything up because there's quite a bit of cleanup when you want to, you know, do further further sculpting on your fabrics in ZBrush after Marvelous Designer. And if you're wondering now, what the hell is Marvelous Designer? Basically, the way we used to do clothing beforehand was like the old masters of the Renaissance, you know, you carved out a stone. That's how you do it in ZBrush. <laughs> this is not how we're doing it now. Now we take full advantage of fast computers where we're simulating it. So it's like you work as a tailor. You just block out the fabrics, then you simulate what kind of fabric is it. Is it silk or cotton or whatever it is? Then you, uh, you can just spend your time on designing cool fabrics instead of technically sculpting it. Because honestly, sculpting fabrics, just it just sucks. It's really, really tricky. So if you're a character artist, you, you know, it turns out characters most have clothing on. Yeah. So uh, pretty important to have good clothing. And this series here is going to teach you how to do exactly this piece. And Marvelous Designer is, is, is now, nowadays it is just the de facto tool for doing fabrics. Because uh, you have, like once you, once you know the software, the software is quite simple to get into. Obviously they're expanding it every year, adding more and more features. But for me, in terms of Marvelous Designer... I'm still using about the same features as I was when it was Marvelous Designer 4, and I think it's Marvelous Designer 8 now. That's like many years ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've added a lot of cool features, not essential features, just features that speed up your workflow a little bit. The tricky part here is learning how to design the patterns. You know, everything that makes up like this this uh, shirt cardigan thing, and like how do you make a sweater, a beanie, a hoodie, whatever it is. You know, that's the more 
tricky thing to to learn but the software itself is actually quite simple uh, but once you have that in like your artist tool belt this is what they use everywhere every 3d industry whether it's games vfx commercials whatever it is this is their preferred way to do it yeah i always tell students to learn marvel's designer well because it just looks awesome and mm. there's always a market for it because people oh, everyone is like oh i'm gonna make all these cool monsters when in reality you need clothing a yeah. lot of clothing for a lot of people yeah and a lot of the time when you're working let's say you're working in the effects uh, a lot of the stuff you'll be doing even as a character artist is you'll be doing a lot of digi doubles and sometimes sometimes the best thing is just to re apologize whatever scan you get uh, in terms of their clothing as well but if it's a more hero character things need to be simulated then having clothing from marvelous designer is just going to speed that workflow up a lot and it's look going to look a lot better so moving on from there, we have actually we have two series here, but this one we're just highlighting the female faces. So this is a fundamental sculpting series. So again, we're sort of like doing this progressively. Would recommend the introduction if you've never opened Seabrush before. So here we're just going to be sculpting female face. That's that's about it. You know, we talk about how to build up a face from the ground up. It's being sculpted from a sphere. Talking about bone structure building it from the inside and out where we it's like one of those principles we always talk about in our youtube videos you know you don't never want to go too ham with details uh too soon because then you just start to distract yourself this was such a hard series to do as well because <laughs> yeah. whenever you're you're doing female everything is so soft when it comes to doing stuff in zbrush it's one of the easiest things to add detail when it comes to sculpting like something like the, like this subject here, it's all about the subtlety. It's all about the lack of detail and just big, strong shapes. Yeah, we have the counterpart to this series is sculpting male faces in ZBrush. And that one is a little easier because men are more forgiving. You, mm. can, it's, you can add a lot more wrinkles to men, make them a lot more blocky, bony. We're a bit uglier, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and, but with women, that's the tricky thing about this. It's like, and he said, the, the smoothness of the face and, and the... You have like a lot of the times what we're attractive to is is symmetry. So preserving that symmetry, but you know, still breaking it a little bit so it doesn't look too too perfect. Um, there's a little bit of detail work like this, uh, adding uh, eye eyelashes, and also you know we'll be sculpting a little bit of hair, but not too crazy. It is primarily focused on the face and how to build that up with re really simple shapes. You know, almost plainer stuff in the beginning, and then just starting to build on top of that bone structure. Then we have, as sort of like a companion to this, is sculpting the facial features in ZBrush. Now this is where the, the tricky thing with this is making it all work, right? So one thing that could be a really good exercise is before you start to assemble everything to the, into one face, is going through our uh, facial features. Like this allows you to just focus on one piece of the face at a time. And this is a lot easier uh, in instead of having to assemble that uh, giant puzzle piece in like one go so here we go through all the major landmarks of the face and and basically show you what a good way to build these up from scratch this is really important because you have to know all these things we cover all the stuff like the helix and the heel all the specific landmarks you mm. have to know aim them and shame them and all <laughs> that kind of stuff because uh, once you are doing the stuff what Morton was talking about in a, in a full series, you have to know this. But now you can focus on them in isolation. I really think there is merit to doing both. And uh, this is, this is, doing this, these kind of studies has really improved my art as an artist. Yeah, and the nice thing about doing a, sort of like a facial feature study is that it's, it's not that it's like doing one facial feature on a complete face or doing a facial feature in isolation, it's not that one is easier or more difficult, but this here just allows you to focus on it in isolation. You can just do an eye. You don't have to be like, oh, okay, my nose always also has to look correct. No, you can just do like sit down for an hour or a few hours and then just go through this and, and figure out, okay, what makes up an eye? You know, and we go through some of the anatomy as well, just so we all, you know, we can speak that same language when it comes to describing stuff. It's gonna make it a lot easier for you to understand it's not that you need to know the anatomical name. Like for me, I keep forgetting them. Me um, too. It's like all the time. Yeah, like I, I, I know the basic ones, the, 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 like the major landmarks of the face. That's a lot easier for me to explain things. But getting into a lot of the subtlety, like I tend to forget them a lot because they're not as necessary. But it's good to get an overview of kind of what they're called and, and what they mean. So that's kind of what this series is, is all about. And I think... 
like it's a really good series also a standalone series if you just want to you know if you're serious about improving the facial features and then to finish off with uh, one of our newly re released series which is hand painting skin textures and substance painter now again this isn't necessarily a beginner tutorial like we're not doing an introduction to painter here we have an actual introduction to painter if you want to check that out this is more of a like if people have already been comfortable with substance painter and they're like okay now i want to know how i paint skin for faces yeah this That's is a fundamental fun. series yeah meaning yeah. that in in five years when this version of painter is insanely obsolete this tutorial here is going to still going to be valid this approach here is something i learned back in like 2007 and it's been i've been using it with poly painting and zbrush and the layers and mari and it's it's never going to become obsolete in terms of a technique so by learning this method you can really just future proof yourself because one thing we see a lot in when it comes to specifically character art is people rely too much on tools. Oh, we have zero meshing for automatic topology and you have UV master for automatic UVs and all that kind of stuff. People don't learn the fundamentals of it. And this here is really the fundamentals. We go through everything from start to finish with basic and then we paint this up by hand. We don't use any photos in this. We just talk about color theory and good fundamentals. So whenever I've been texturing stuff for production as well, I'm using this approach. Whatever it is you're taking, you're extra painting like when we did doomsday or you know you're doing this old man it's the same approach yeah i think the cool thing about this series is like you mentioned everything is hand painted obviously you know we use uh pictures for reference to paint off of what we always preach about <laughs> uh it's really important to use reference but everything is painted by hand and it's showing you how to go through fill layers and build things up methodically you know we sort of like divide the face into three distinct kind of colors we have our yellows, our reds, and our blues, and just different ways of mixing these together, uh, using a little bit of filters to blur stuff out. But most of it is just it is just hand painted, not really focused on the proceduralness of Substance Painter. We also go through how to do this high frequency pass as well. This is the this is slightly more proceduralness as well. You know, we obviously aren't painting every single pore here. Cause that's insane. Mm -hmm. We are using the advantages of um, smart materials and Painter, where there are a lot of pre-made skin materials, so we can get something like this very fast. Talking about some specular roughness as well. This is something people keep overdoing, keeping it nice and simple and really just focusing on the fundamentals, which a professional texture artist would need. So, I mean, even if you are interested in, in, in only modeling, it's still really handy to know the steps of texturing, just knowing how it connects to the other one, knowing that how much you sculpt in, uh, in ZBrush, how this can affect your stuff in, in painting. Everything is really connected. So the more you know about the entire approach, the better your characters are really going to be. So yeah, I think that about wraps up our sort of like top picks that uh, we have on the Flip Normals Marketplace for anyone looking to either get into becoming a character artist or just for people who are looking to improve their skills as character artists. And remember, right now until the 1st of July, all products on the Flip Normals Marketplace is, uh, they are 50% off with the, the, the discount code SUMMER. So, you know, feel free to, to hop over to the Marketplace and Check out any of these products or any of the other products on the store and see if there's anything for you to, to pick up. Yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.